we have learned two ways to set up an integral for the volume of a solid of revolution. One way is the washer method, the other way is the shell method. The full name is the method of cylindrical shells. Now I want to summarize in what case, in which case it's easier to use which method. In general, if you have a plane region like this, a plane region with a top boundary and a bottom boundary over some interval. If you want to ro rotate the plane region around a horizontal line, then it's easier to use the washer method to set up the integral for the volume of the solid of, of revolution. If you rotate the plane region around a vertical line, it's easier to use the shell method to set up an integral for the volume of the solid of revolution. I will show you why using some other cases, the two cases on the, on the next slide. On this slide, you have a plane region, so something like this, a plane region with a right boundary and a left boundary. Now let's say the right boundary is the graph of the equation now let's say x equals f of y. The left boundary is the graph of the equation. Now let's say x equals g of y. Both functions as functions of y are defined on the interval from c to d. Now let's say c is here. And uh, d is here. Again, we call the, a region like this, a region with right and the left boundaries over the interval from C to D. In this case, if you rotate the plane region around a vertical line, then it's easier to use the washer method to set up an integral for the volume of, of revolution. And uh, if you rotate the plane region around a horizontal line, then it's easier to use the shell method to set up an integral for the volume of the solid of, of revolution. I will show you why in both cases. Now for the first case, we just talked about how to set up a in a integral for the volume of the solid uh, if we rotate the plane region around the vertical axis. If we rotate the plane region around any other vertical line, it's very similar. So before we do anything, you need to imagine the shape of the solid. That's the plane region. You rotate the plane region around the vertical axis. Imagine the shape of the solid. After getting that, we follow the step procedures we mentioned before. Now step one, in step one we get the interval. We project the solid. Onto y axis, the vertical axis. We get an interval. We get the interval from, from C to D. Using our common sense to understand projecting. Alternatively, you can think what is the smallest possible value of y, what is the largest possible value of y for all the points in the solid or for all the points on the plane region, the same thing. Step 2. In step 2, we need to get uh, the area of 
the cross section for every y. For each y, for every y, for all y, the same thing. For every y, in between c and d, on the interval from c to d. So y is here. Before we get to the area of the cross section, we need to imagine the shape of the cross section. Okay. Passing through this point, passing through this point, now look at the cursor, the mouse cursor. You use a plane perpendicular to y axis and passing through this point to cut the solid. To cut the solid, you have a washer. The washer is in the shape is in between two circles. A washer is something like this. The region in between two circles. I'm going to write something down. For each y uh, in between C and D, the cross section, perpendicular to y axis. As a washer. Again, a washer is uh, the the region in between two circles. To get the area of the washer, to get the area of the cross section, we need the outer radius and the inner radius. For the two circles, I'm going to call that uh, the inner radius, the radius of the smaller circle. I'm going to call that the length, the outer radius, the radius of the larger circle. We need this to get the area of the washer, the cross section. A perpendicular to y axis is a washer. To get the area, we need the inner radius and the outer radius. With the, I'm going to use uh, with outer radius. I'm going to use uppercase R of Y to denote the outer radius. I'm going to use lowercase R of Y to denote the inner radius. I'm using R of Y, so because the value of the radius is dependent on Y. Okay, now let's figure out the outer radius and the inner radius. Again, everything is going to be in terms of y. So before getting that, we need to see the washer in the following way. Y is a number, y is a point in between C and D. This point y will determine a little line segment. The line segment has two endpoints on the two curves. You rotate this line segment around the vertical axis. You have a washer. Now try to understand that washer is the cross section. Again, this the cross section is a washer. That washer can be viewed as a rotating this line segment around the vertical axis. Now we are going to get the outer radius and the inner radius of the washer. But before that, we need the coordinates of, of these two points. 
Now look at that point, please. Look at the mouse cursor. This point has y coordinate of y. So because of that y. And uh, this point is on the curve with the equation x equals f of y. So x coordinate of this point in terms of y is f of y. So likewise, this point has the coordinates g of y and y. x coordinate is g of y, y coordinate is y. Now listen to me. The outer radius, again, the washer, the cross section is viewed as the cross section of turned by rotating this line segment around the vertical axis. So the outer radius is the distance between this point and the y-axis, which is f of y. I just told you the outer radius is f of y. So likewise, the inner radius, you rotate the little line segment around the vertical axis, you, you, you have a washer. The in, inner radius of the washer, or the radius of the, the smaller circle, is the distance between this point and the vertical axis, which is g of y, which is the x-coordinate of this point, g of y. So the inner radius is, is g of y. Now, for the washer, we have outer radius and the inner radius in terms of y. Now we can represent the area of the washer in terms of y. So the area of the cross section Or we can just say it's uh, the cross sectional area. I'm going to use A of Y to denote that. So, because it's dependent on Y, I'm going to use A of Y. It's equal to, it's equal to, uh, it, it's the difference between two areas and the two circles. The area of the larger circle is pi times uppercase R of Y, the whole thing squared, minus the area of the smaller circle, so which is pi times the lowercase R of Y, the whole thing squared. The area of a circle is pi R squared. We plug in the functions, we have pi uh, outer radius is, is, is f of y, okay, equals pi times f of y, the whole f of y, the whole thing squared, minus pi times g of y, the inner radius r of y is, is g of y, g of y, the whole thing squared, That's how we get uh, the area of the cross-section for every y. Lastly, lastly, we are ready to have the integral for the volume, the volume of the revolution after we rotate the plane region around the vertical axis. The volume Lastly, the volume of the solid of, of revolution is equal to, we are using the washer method. We know the cross section of A of Y for every Y. Now we integrate the area of the cross sections A of Y from C to D, we have the volume. 
So the volume is equal to the integral from C to D A of Y. So which is from C to D, the integral from C to D pi times f of y, the whole thing squared, minus pi times g of y, the whole thing squared, pi r squared. And then dy. Now we talk about the second case. In this case, we rotate a plane region like this around a horizontal line. The plane region is a region with the left and the right boundaries. In this case, it's easier to set up an integral for the volume of the solid of, of revolution if we use the shell method. The full name is the method of cylindrical shells. To simplify, we just rotate the plane region around the horizontal axis, x-axis. Before doing anything, imagine the shape of the solid. We rotate the plane region around the horizontal axis, imagine the shape of the solid. And then we follow the step procedures we did in class. When using the shell method, you project the plane region onto some axis. In this, in this case, we project the plane region onto the vertical axis. Project the plane region. onto y-axis. y-axis, we want to get an interval. We get the interval from C to D. That's an interval of y, of y values. In the second step, we get the, the surface area of the shells. I will show you how to form the shell. Each value of y in between C and D will determine determines a line segment. A line segment like that. The line segment has two endpoints on the two curves. You rotate the line segment around the horizontal axis. You rotate the line segment around x-axis, you have a cylinder. That is the cylindrical shell we are talking about in this contest. I will write something down. Okay. The argument is true for any value of y in between c and d. Now I write for every y, this notation is for, for each, for every, for all, the same thing. For every y in between C and D, on the interval from C to D, the, this value of y will determine a line segment. And you rotate, the, you rotate the line segment, you have a cylinder. You rotate the line segment, you have a cylinder, right? I will call the cylinder the cylinder determined by y. The cylinder is called the cylindrical shell. The cylindrical shell determined by y. By that y. Now look at the cursor. 
Got that to why. We're going to uh, figure out the surface area. We need the surface area of of the cylinder. But before getting that, now let's now let's recall what we did in class. What what we said in class. Okay. Each value of y will determine a line segment. On the interval from C to D, there are many values of y. Actually, y can be anywhere in between C and D. Right? Many values of y will determine many line segments. Actually, the plane region is formed by all such horizontal line segments. Again, you treat the plane region to be formed by many line segments. For each line segment, you rotate the line segment, you have a cylinder, a cylindrical shell, a cylinder. Many line segments will determine many cylinders. I hope it's not too hard to imagine. Many cylinders, many such cylinders will form the solid. The solid after you rotate the plane region around the horizontal axis. I hope it makes sense. The volume of the solid can be evaluated by integrating the surface areas of all the cylindrical shells for all the y's from C to D. I hope that makes sense. So we need the area, the, the surface area of, of the cylinder, the cylindrical shells. Before getting that, we need the uh, uh, for a cylinder. We need we need the base air, base radius and the height. The base is a circle. We need the base radius and the height. Okay, so the cylindrical shell determined by y is a cylinder. Height. We need the base radius and the height. Right, the base radius. I'm going to use r of x to denote the base, the base radius. Sorry, r of y. The base radius is dependent on y. It's determined by the value of y, right? And the, the height, we need the height of the cylinder to get the surface area. I'm going to use h of y to denote height. Again, you imagine you rotate the line segment. Now look at the mouse cursor around the horizontal axis. You have a cylinder. Actually, the cylinder is a, a sideway. We still call the call them the height and the, the base radius, but the height is uh, sideway. Base radius is also is also side sideway, right? Now let's get the base radius first. Again, we rotate that line segment around the horizontal axis. We have a cylinder. The base radius is actually the distance between the line segment and x-axis. We know the coordinates of the two points. The two points, two endpoints. So, the distance between the line segment and the horizontal axis is actually the y coordinate of either point. So the base radius is y coordinate of the point. So which is y? 
you see the y coordinate is y, right? We also need the height of the cylinder. We rotate the little line segment around horizontal axis. The height of the cylinder is actually the distance of the line segment. The distance of the line segment. You know the coordinates of the two points. So it's easy to see the distance between the two points uh, is actually the difference between the two x coordinates, which means the height of the cylinder, the height of the sideways cylinder, is the difference between x coordinates of the two points in terms of y, so which is f of y minus g of y. Now we are ready to get the surface area of, of the cylinder. Okay, the cylinder is something like this. We know the base radius, we know the height. Uh, the surface area, we only need the surrounding the surrounding part. By that we mean we do not need the the areas of two circles. Right. Okay. So the area of the cylinder or the area of the cylindrical shell. is uh, the area of a cylinder, if we just uh, get the area of the surrounding part is 2 pi r h, right? It's uh, 2 pi r, in this case it's 2 pi r of y, and then times h of y. Again, the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h. 2 pi r is the circumference circumference of the base. Circumference is a circle, 2 pi r, right? And then the height, the height is, uh, so that is the height. That is the base, the base radius. So we have the surface area. So the surface area. Now we plug in the functions. We know uh, the base radius is y. The height is uh, f of y minus g of y. So we are ready to write the, the surface area in terms of a, a function of y. So you have uh, 2 pi times y and then you have 2 pi y and then times the height of the cylinder is f of y minus g of y. As we mentioned earlier, you integrate the surface area of the cylindrical shells from C to D, you have the volume of the solid of, of, of revolution. Lastly, the volume of the solid of revolution is evaluated by integrating the surface area, the surface areas of the cylinders from C to D, the integral from C to D, 
pull pi away times f of y minus g of y and then dy. That's what we wanted in here, right? 